from the sensation of an unseen presence inside a bedroom to the feeling of an unseen force pinning someone to their bed. These are four bone-chilling and true sleep paralysis stories. To help me with today's video, I'm joined by Wolf's Campfire. I'll link his channel in the video description below. I am Fearcrawler. Welcome to the video. Other than one other soul, I have never discussed this before. I have researched sleep paralysis in depth and for a while I believed it to be the cause of my experiences. These experiences have only happened in my parents' house. On numerous occasions, I would wake up in my bed, totally incapable of moving anything, but I could blink my eyes. I felt an immense weight on my chest, but nothing was there, just darkness. Not really like a shadow, but a darkness. It would speak to me, and it was always the same grim, raspy whisper. I could not move or say anything. I tried to scream and scream, but no sound would come out. I know this sounds exactly like sleep paralysis, and I wrote it off as such for a long time. I would have liked to believe these visits were just me dreaming and nothing more. However, whenever I'm not sleeping at my house, this has never happened. Not once. When I was living elsewhere, it never happened. But when I moved back home, it started again. Never anywhere else. I kept all this to myself until my cousin came to stay with us for a few months. He had never had this type of experience until he came to stay with us. Several nights in a row, he said he woke up with something choking him, and he couldn't move or talk. He didn't tell me this until after it had happened, about three nights in a row. He asked me out of the blue if I believed in ghosts. I didn't say anything. He then began to tell me about what had been happening to him. I began to tell him about what had been going on, and I told him I thought it was odd that it hadn't been happening to me since he came to stay with us. He was very frightened by the whole ordeal, and we began discussing it. The thing that really bothered me was how he was explaining exactly what I was going through without me saying anything to him about it. Even the types of things in which it said to him were almost exactly like what it was saying to me. Even the voice matched the one I had been hearing. Now up to this point, I guess a person could chalk this up to sleep paralysis or some rational explanation. What happened next, however, is far more chilling and much harder to rationally explain. While we were discussing this, I noticed a sharp change in the room's climate. It seemed very cold, but only in one part of the room and nowhere else. I don't remember exactly what was said right before the noise, but we were talking about the ways to get rid of it when we were silenced by a strange growling sound. It did not sound like anything else I have ever heard in my entire life. The best way to sum it up would be a high-pitched wail like a cat in great pain. The noise seemed to move around us like it was moving towards the door. He looked at me strangely and then suddenly my door slammed shut. It was wide open and it rapidly closed. And I mean hard. This all happened within several seconds. Since that day, neither him nor I have had a similar experience. I sleep much better now and I haven't had anything even remotely similar to this happen to me. Nor has my cousin. Since I was a kid, I've had weird visions and encounters. My parents always listened, but I was never scared, so they were never overly concerned about it. Though, my mother always believed me. I think she chalked it up to my creative nature. As I got older, I noticed more and more, specifically at night. Regardless of what house or apartment I'm in, I've noticed a presence between 2 and 3 a.m. on a recurring basis, multiple times at exactly 2.15 a.m. Often it's just feeling or even seeing someone in the room. A couple of times, I've woken up because I felt someone rip my blankets off. 
and had this feeling of someone watching me. But all in all though, it's been alarming and sometimes annoying. Yet, it's always felt playful and I've never felt any real fear until last night. I've been living in my apartment for almost three years, alone. You hear a lot in an old building, and I always think I see things. But last night, I fell asleep around 1 a.m. I was sleeping on my stomach and felt something push my head into my pillow, trying to smother me. My first thought was, was this really happening? and I went into defense mode. Though, I had amazing resistance, like I couldn't control my body. I moved my arm between my face and pillow, reached back to what was pushing me and yelled, STOP! There was of course nothing there, but as I yelled, they let go of my head and tried to push me off my bed. I felt like I reached the edge and jumped up turned on my lights and looked around. It was exactly 2.11 a.m. At that exact moment, I yelled, leave me alone, and my iPod went on. As I secured my room, I noticed my bedroom door was closed, but not shut as I had left it the night before. I walked through my apartment and came back to my room and tried to go back to sleep. A little uneasy, to say the least. About three years ago, around the beginning of January, I had a very unusual experience in my room. I was around 16 years old and I had just finished talking on the phone. It was around 11.30 at night and I wasn't sleepy. Since my parents would have gotten mad that I was up so late at night, I didn't want to turn on the light to entertain myself, so I had a candle lit and started drawing on my notepad for about another 15 minutes or so. Then I just blew out the candle and laid on my back wide awake staring at the ceiling. A few seconds later I started hearing a ticking in my room, like a clock or something. But the thing was I didn't have a clock in my room and we didn't even have a clock in the house that would tick. So I thought it was my dog playing with something. But then I remembered she doesn't sleep in my room, and my door was closed so she couldn't have wandered into my room or anything, so I just tried to ignore it. But I kept hearing the ticking. It was two ticks and then a few seconds pause, then two ticks, and a few seconds pause again. A few minutes later, instead of the pauses, I heard a creak in the floor. I thought it was my dog again, but no. My door was closed so she couldn't be in my room. It sounded like someone took a step at the foot of my bed. I heard two ticks, then two creaks, two steps, and two creaks. So I started getting a little nervous. I sat up to see if I saw anything, but I saw nothing in my room. It was kind of hard to see anything because my room was dark. I laid down covered my face and yelled for my mom. As soon as I yelled, the ticks and the creaks got faster and faster, and all of a sudden I felt something jump on top of me as if they were trying to pin me down. I started screaming. I started kicking and punching whatever was on top of me to try to get it off, but no luck. Whatever it was was pinning me to my bed and I couldn't get up. So I started screaming louder and louder and of course the ticks and creaks got faster and louder and it felt like forever for my parents to come into my room. Finally, I heard footsteps running to my room and my parents opened the door, turned on the lights and everything stops. The ticking stops. The creaks stop and whatever was on top of me just vanished off of me. I was left hysterically crying and shaking wondering what had happened. Until this day, I still have no clue what it was. Last night, when I was sleeping, I thought I was having a dream. 
But now, I'm not so sure. It felt so real. It was like I was above myself. I was laying on my bed, and I was being held down by my wrists and ankles. Something very heavy was on top of me. I tried to move, and I tried to yell, but I couldn't. Then, just as I woke up, it was gone, and I felt very strange and could hardly breathe. I stayed awake for hours thinking of what it could be. Can anyone please help me and try to explain it to me? Also, my cat always sleeps on my bed, but he wouldn't come in the room, and he slept in the lounge room. That's all for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed. Until next time, everybody take care, be safe, and above all, stay scared.